Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God you are. What a beautiful Savior. What a glorious God. Loving Jesus, we are so grateful to you. Marvelous God, you are so kind. Awesome God, you are beautiful in all your ways. There is no one like you. You are the rock that never fails. You are the rock that never changes. We lift your name on high. We worship you. We magnify you. We glorify your holy name, your majesty. You deserve the highest praise. You are wonderful. You are beautiful. You are marvelous. Good God, that is your name, everlasting rock of ages, covenant-keeping God, awesome God, reliable God. What a marvelous God you are. We say to you that is seated on the throne of glory, be all the honor, be all the adoration. What a mighty God we serve. We say blessed be his name forever. Child of God, our God is faithful. Even in the lion's den, he is a faithful God. The master wants you to know that he is faithful, even in the lion's den. In that lion's den where you are, where it looks like nobody remembers you. It looks as if it's just you and the devil. It looks like you are the mercy of Satan, but child of God, even where you are, he is the God of the lion's den. He is God even in the den of the lion. We serve a God that is mighty to save. And so, beloved child of God, he wants you to know that he is faithful. He is faithful. In the midst of your situation, he is faithful. Child of God, what does it mean to be in the lion's den? Being in the lion's den means to be in a dangerous situation, in a hostile situation, in, a, in an oppressive situation, in a difficult situation. Child of God, even in that lion's den, God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. God is faithful. Child of God, many believers, many children of God, they are in the midst of difficult situations. Beloved, and these situations are in different levels of, of intensity. The master wants us to know he is a faithful God. He is a deliverer. The rock of ages is the rock that never fails. You can put your confidence in him. You can trust him. You can depend on him. He is reliable. He never fails. He never fails, child of God. Let's turn our Bibles to Ezekiel chapter 37. And I'm reading from verse 1 to 6. The Lord took hold of me. And I was carried by the Spirit of the Lord to a valley filled with bones. He led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. They were scattered everywhere across the ground, and they were completely dried out. Then the Lord asked me, Son of man, can these bone, bones become living people again? Oh, sovereign Lord, I replied, you alone knows the answer to that. Then he said to me, Speak a prophetic message to these bones and say, Dry bones, listen to the word of the Lord. This is what the sovereign law says. Look, I am going to put breath into you and make you live again. I will put flesh and muscles on you and cover you with skin. I will put breath into you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. Child of God, this is the message from the throne of grace. To the one that sees you even in that lion's den. To the one that sees you in that pit where you are. The Lord wants you to know that he is the Lord and there is no other. That he is the Lord and there is no other. The Lord wants you to know that he is asking you this morning. Son of man, can you live again? Can you live again? He's asking you. What is your answer to him this morning, beloved? Whatsoever your answer is, the master is saying, he will put breath in you again. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Many of God's children are in the valleys of life. Tough situations, 
dangerous situations, challenging situations. Many are on the floor, zero level, zero level. Many are in the pit, below the floor level. The master sees it all. Many are scattered. Just like the valley of that dry bones, the bones were scattered everywhere. Many are scattered. Beloved child of God, the master has come to put breath on you this morning. Many have, are completely dry in faith, just like it was in the valley of dry, of dry bones. The Bible says, he led me all around among the bones that covered the valley floor. And those bones were the armies of Israel. Those bones were the children of the living God. The enemy thought he was done with them. On the ground, completely dried. But when the maker of heaven and earth stepped, stepped in, when the alpha and the omega stepped in, when the beginning and the end stepped in, when the one that waited for Lazarus to die and be buried stepped in, child of God, he began to speak. He began to speak and be loved when he spoke and spoke to the son of man. He said, can these bones become living people again? And the son of man re replied, then he said to me, speak a prophetic message to these bones. Child of God, it does not matter the situation that you are in. The master wants you to speak again. The master wants you to speak again, beloved. And speak so that that dry situation can hear the word of the living God. Does not matter the stage of that situation, child of God. The Lord will put breath in you again. David understood him. David understood him. In Psalm 30 verse 5, David said, Though weeping may endure for the night, joy comes in the morning. Weeping may endure for the night. You can weep for the night. It's in the word. But the morning will surely come, child of God, if you will hold on to the living God. Remember David, a man so loved of the living God. A man that loved God so much. That's David. But if we search the, lives of, the life of David, David kept telling his story. David's story is being told. David also is telling his own story. Let's look at David in 1 Samuel chapter 17, and I'm reading from verse 34 to verse 37. But David persisted. I have been taking care of my father's sheep and goats, he said. When a lion or a bear comes to steal a lamb from the flock, I go after it with a club and rescue the lamb from its mouth. If the animal turns on me, I catch it by the jaw and club it to death. I have done this to both lions and bears, and I will do this, and I will do it to this pagan Philistine again. For he has defiled the armies of the living God, the Lord who rescued me from the claws of the lion and the bear will rescue me from this Philistine. Saul so finally consented. All right, go ahead, he said, and may the Lord be with you. What was happening in that place? David was telling his story. Child of God, what is your story? David was telling his story. David was sharing his experience in the midst of a greater battle. David was telling his story. David was remembering his past work, his past experiences, even in the midst of the trouble that was facing him. Look at the story of David. A man that was taking care of his father's business. A man in the will of God. What came along? What came his way? Bear, lion, child of God. Do you see lion living in your environment? Do you see people keep lion in the house as a pet? Child of God. Some of us have never seen lion before. Lions live in the forest. Lions don't live among human beings. Why? They are dangerous animals. But David, in the course of his assignment, the man that loves God so much, lion came his way. Bear came his way. 
in a secluded place, in the forest, in the midst of other dangerous animals, the king of the jungle met him. Child of God, which jungle are you in? This man loved God so much. Yet when, he, when you see he's telling his story today, what did he meet? The bear, the lion. And before him, the uncircumcised Philistine again. In the midst of that situation. Oh, David is singing that song. Yahweh, you are worthy of my praise. You did it before, you are doing it again. Child of God, what are you going through? Remember the story of David. And speak it to that situation. Speak it to that situation. Because when Goliath was standing before him, he was speaking. He said, son of man, prophesy. Speak. David was speaking. David was speaking. And you can see he spoke his way to victory. As he worshipped God, remembering the faithfulness of the one that watched over Israel. That neither sleeps nor slumber. Child of God. We want to see some things from the life of David this morning. Because some of us are feeling as if, oh, this is my pit experience. God, why am I not your child again? Remember, David was a man after God's own heart. Find your place in David today. As we go through different circumstances in the life of David. When he told the story of the wild animal he faced, he was in the forest. He found himself going through wilderness experience. A child of God. Remember that when the lion came, David did not back out. David faced it squarely. David faced it squarely. The life of David. A man after God's own heart. A man that fought so many battles, yet was never offended in his God. A man that went through diverse situations and circumstances of life, yet never questioned God, why me? Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 18, and I'm reading from verse 10 to verse 11. The Bible says, the very next day, a tormenting spirit from God overwhelmed Saul, and he began to rave in his house like a madman. David was playing the harp as he did each day. But Saul had a spear in his hand, and he suddenly hauled it at David, intending to pin him to the wall. But David escaped him twice. Child of God, do you know what was happening there? David was in the same house with a very angry man. David was in the same house with a man that was so angry that he was like he was a madman. Child of God, are you living with someone that is so full of anger? Are you living in a hostile environment? Saul was supposed to be a father figure to David. Beloved child of God, do you have someone that is supposed to be a father or a caretaker in your life but is so angry with you? So mad that he can pin you to the wall and because of that you are so down. Child of God, in the midst of all the spare that, 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 that Saul was holding, David was still playing the harp. David was still playing the harp, child of God. Just the same way when he faced Goliath, he was still sharing his testimony. What was happening to David there? Death was confronting him. Child of God, please, if you find yourself in a situation whereby you have a husband that is so mad, always hostile, there's nothing you do that ever pleases him. You have a father that is always mad. He doesn't understand you. You have a boss that looks as if the, devil, the kingdom of darkness just sent him your way. Always angry. You go left, he's angry. You are trying to please him, but he's never pleased. David found himself in a situation like that. His was so severe that a father figure threw a spear at him. But beloved, God delivered him. He didn't throw it once. Twice in that anger, Saul hauled the javelin at David. But beloved, the God of the lion's den delivered David, even when David was in that dangerous situation. And so, child of God, is that your situation? David was there before. David was there before and God delivered him. 
And so, child of God, if God delivered David, he will deliver you. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 22. I'm reading from verse 1 to 4. The Bible says, So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Some of his brothers and his other relatives joined him there. Then others began coming, men who were in trouble and in debt, who were just discontented until David was the captain of about 400 men. Later, David went to Mizpah in Moab, where he asked the king, Please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. So David's parents stayed in Moab with the king during the entire time David was living in his stronghold. Child of God, what was happening to David? Someone was after his life. The king of a whole nation was after David's life. His family was not even safe. Do you know where David? Do you know David had to go look for a place to hide? He couldn't move about freely. Hired assassins were after David, child of God. Kidnappers were after David. Look at the people that he was leading. Men in debt. Men in debt, child of God, are you in debt? Are you discontented? You are not satisfied because of the things that are happening around you. Came to a point whereby David had to go to Moab. Remember Moab? That same place that the, the people there, God did not accept them. Among the people of Israel, David had to take his father and his mother there to go hide them. The same way Jesus had to be taken to Egypt for safety. Do you think it was an easy time for David? And so, child of God, why are you so angry that kidnappers are kidnapping? And because of that, you say, oh, God has failed. Uh, higher than assassins are after you. They were after David before. But child of God, look at what David said. He said, please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. David knew that God will do something for him. Did God not do for David? If he did for David, why would he do for you? Until I know what God will do for me. A man that knows that God will never fail him. He knew that no matter the situation around him, God will do something for him. Child of God, God will do something for you. God will do something for you. Is that all? No, that's not all. Look at the life of David. Just one man that loves the Lord so much. Look at him in 2 Samuel chapter 15. I'm reading from verse 9 to verse 14. All right, the king told him, go and fulfill your vow. So Absalom went to Hebron. But while he was there, he sent secret messengers to the tribes of Israel to stir up a rebellion against the king. As soon as you hear the ram's horn, his message read, you are to say Absalom has been crowned king in Hebron. He took 200 men from Jerusalem with him as guests, but they knew nothing about his actions, his intentions. While Absalom was offering the sacrifice, he sent for Ahitophel, one of David's counselors who lived in Gilo. Soon many others also joined Absalom and the conspiracy gained momentum. A message soon arrived in Jerusalem to tell David, all Israel have joined Absalom in a conspiracy against you. Then we must flee at once or it will be too late. David urged his men, hurry if we get out of the city before Absalom arrives. Hurry if we get out of the city before Absalom arrives. Both we and the city of Jerusalem will be spared from disaster. Child of God, did you follow that reading? This is a father and a son. The father told the son, go and fulfill your vow. What do you think was in the mind of David? Do you think that the vow David was talking of was what Absalom was going to do? No. David did not know that his son conspired against him. 
His son was lying to him. His son was deceiving him. He told his father one thing. He was going to do another thing against the father. Child of God, you have a child that is rebelling against you. You have a child that is stealing from you. You have a child that is resisting you. That is David right there. That is David right there. His son rebelled against him. His son gathered people together to fight the father. David was running because of the son he gave birth to child of God. And so, that you have a rebellious child does not mean that God has failed you. Child of God. That you have a child with evil intentions against you does not mean that God has failed you. That you have a child that goes to carry your property and sell it without your content does not mean that God is against you. David faced that situation. Absalom, his son, rose a nation against his father. Conspiracy against his father. Household enemy. This is his son. This is his son. How, how, did, how did you think what was in the mind of David? Child of God. What was in the mind of David? Did David curse his God? David did not curse his God. It came to a point whereby his son had to even gather people working with his father to use against his father. David said, if we don't flee from Jerusalem, there will be disaster on our lives and even the city. The son of David is the one fighting David here. And so, child of God, Let's stop that, why me, why me? God, why me, why me? David did not ask God that. Find yourself in the life of David. Find yourself there, child of God. Yet he loved the Lord with all his heart. Look at the life of David. I am reading 2 Samuel chapter 16. And I'm reading from verse 5 to verse 13. As King David came to Buharam, a man came out of the village cursing them. It was Shemaiah, son of Jerah, from the same clan as Saul's family. He threw stones at the king and the king's officers and all the mighty warriors who surrounded him. Get out of here, you murderer. You scoundrel, he shouted at David. The Lord is paying you back for all the bloodshed in Saul's clan. You stole his throne, and now the Lord has given it to your son Absalom. At last, you will taste some of your own medicine, for you are a murderer. Why should this dead dog curse my lord, the king? Abishai, son of Zeruel, demanded, let me go over and cut off his head. No, the king said, who asked your opinion, you son of Zeruel? For the Lord has told him to curse me. If the Lord has told him to curse me, who are you to stop him? Then David said to Abishai and all his servants, My own son is trying to kill me. Doesn't this relative of Saul have even more reason to do so? Leave him alone, let him curse. For the Lord has told him, for the Lord has told him to do it. And perhaps the Lord will see that I am being wronged. And he will bless me because of these curses today. Child of God. Verse 13. So David and his men continued down the road. And Shemaiah kept pace with them in a nearby hillside. Cursing and throwing stones and dirt at David. Child of God. This is King David here. This is King David here. What was happening to him? A man came cursing him. Throwing stones, throwing dirt on him and even his security around him. Child of God, troublesome situation. People were fighting David. That's what's happening here. Cursing at him. All manner of accusation. Murderer, you took the throne of Saul. What God did, they accused David. They insulted David. He said, yes, he's even, he said, God is punishing you. That's why your son Absalom has taken the throne from you. All manner of accusation. Child of God, does it look like what you are going through? 
Who is pouring death at you? Who is accusing you? And because of that, you are so down, you have forgotten God. Let's learn something from David. Let's learn something from David. He said, allow him. Perhaps God will look at it and maybe give me blessing from him. The mindset of David, child of God. When Abishai was saying, that, oh, let me go and cut off the head of this one. David said, no, leave him. It's an opportunity for me to be blessed. David said, even my own son wants to kill me. How much more this? David was making excuses for him. David still protected the one that wanted to destroy him. Beloved, look at what David said here. He said, verse 12, and perhaps the Lord will see that I'm being wronged and will bless me because of these curses today. When I read this verse, I meditated on it. I said, so there is a blessing in someone cursing you. David saw beyond the physical. He said, perhaps allow him, let him curse me very well. David knew he was being wronged. He didn't fight for himself. He said, allow this situation, even though I'm being wrong. God, perhaps God will see it and use it to bless me. Look at the mindset of David, child of God. People are cursing you. You are cursing back. They throw one stone, you throw five stones back. Child of God, if you can fight for yourself, will God fight for you? Let's learn from David. So if you are going through difficult situations, people are even telling you, yes, God is punishing you because of this. And you are like, God, it has happened to David before. It has happened to David before. And they even accused him in the name of God. They accused him in the name of God. So child of God, maybe that is your situation. Maybe that is what you are going through. David was right there. This man that God said is a man after my own heart. These are experiences. These are the things that were going on in his life, child of God. Look at 2 Samuel chapter 6. And I'm reading... From verse 20 to verse 23, when David returned home to bless his own family, Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet him. She said in disgust, how distinguished the king of Israel looked today, shamelessly exposing himself to the servant girls like any vulgar person might do. This sounds like the way a troublesome woman insults her husband. Look at you, foolish man. Look at your mates are doing this and doing that. David found himself in a situation like that. David found himself in challenging situations like that. Child of God. And you are killing yourself. Because your husband is cursing at you. This is David's wife. This is David's wife. David was going through marital crisis, child of God. There was problem in the home. The man of God wanted to put blessing in the house, but the daughter of Jezebel was resisting the blessing. This is what was happening in David's life. And beloved, if you read down, the Bible says David retorted to Michal, I was dancing before the Lord who chose me over your father and his family. He appointed me as the leader of Israel, the people, the people of the Lord. So I celebrated before him. Yes, I am willing to look even more foolish than this, even to be humiliated in my own eyes. But those servant girls you mentioned will intend, in, indeed think I am distinguished. So Michael, the daughter of Saul, remained childless throughout her entire life. Even in the midst of the marital crisis, child of God, David was celebrating God's faithfulness in his life. David did not focus his attention on what the woman was saying. Man of God, why are you fighting like a woman, as they say? Why your wife said one, two, three, and because of that, you have thrown your anointing away. And you are proving that you are the head of the family. Beloved man of God, why not celebrate God in your life? Why not stay focused 
on what God is saying concerning you, on the assignment he has put in your hands. Don't allow the daughter of Jezebel to stop you. Leave her in the hands of God. Because child of God, when David did the right thing, look at the life of Micah. God took celebration from her life. God took celebration from her life. The God that knows how to settle David is that God we are talking about today. Child of God, can you see that despite the fact that David loved the Lord, he had his challenges. He had his challenges. He loved, you can find yourself in the life of David. I want us to look at 1 Samuel chapter 20, 25. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Samuel chapter 25. And I will be reading from verse 4 to verse 12. The Bible says, When David heard that Nabal was sharing his sheep, he sent ten of his young men to come out with a message for Nabal. Peace and prosperity to you and your family and everything you own. I am told that it is sheep sharing time. While your shepherd stayed among us near Carmel, we never harmed them. And nothing was even stolen from them. Ask your own men and they will tell you this is true. So would you be kind to us? Since we have come at a time of celebration, please share your provisions. Please share any provisions you might have on hand with us and with your friend David. David's young men gave this message to Nabal in David's name and they waited for a reply. Who is this fellow David? Nabal sneered to the young men. Who does this son of Jesse think he is? There are lots of servants these days who run away from their masters. Should I take my bread and my water and my meat that I have slaughtered for my sharers and give to a band of outlaws who came from who knows where? So David's young men returned and told him what neighbor has said. Child of God, what's happening here? David was begging for food. As simple as it is. Look at the story he told. Please tell him, remember the other day, your young man, he planned his, he, he planned his way. He was looking for provision. He was looking for meat and bread, King David. That season of his life, there was scarcity. And he went to look for help. And beloved, they gave him the story of his life. He received insults. He said, who, who is David? Who, who does he think he is? Child of God, does it sound like something that someone told you and you cannot sleep because of that? It was told to David. He said, band of uh, useless men. Because David needed bread. And David was asking from someone that he has even helped before. Child of God, you want to kill yourself because you remember when you helped that man. And when it was his turn to help you in your difficult situation, he insulted you. And because of that, you cannot sleep. David found himself there. Once upon a time, he was looking for meat and bread. But child of God, a time came in David's life. Do you know how many cows were killed in one day on his table? No situation is permanent. God allowed him to go through that season because he was going through training, child of God. And so, beloved, what you are going through does not mean that the Lord has failed you. Does not mean that the Lord has failed you. David also went through it. David went through it. Yet the Bible, when we read the story of David and we talk about how much he loved the Lord and how much he, uh, uh, so many beautiful things about David. Child of God, his life was like your own life and like my own life too. He experienced the daily things that we, we, we experience and we are experiencing and we will be experiencing. David experienced it. But it did not affect his relationship with his God. Child of God, are you saying I've not found myself in David's life? Okay, let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 30. 1 Samuel chapter 20, yes, chapter 30. And I'm reading from verse 1 to 6. Three days later, when David and his men arrived home at their town of Ziklag, they found that the Amalekites 
had made a raid into the Negev and Ziklag and had crushed Ziklag and burned it to the ground. They had carried off the women and children and everyone else without killing anyone. When David and his men saw the ruins and realized what had happened to their families, they wept until they could weep no more. David's two wives, Ahinoam from Jezreel and Abigail, the widow of Nabal from Carmel, were among those captured. David was now in great danger because all his men were very bitter about losing their sons and daughters. And they began to talk of stoning him. But David found strength in the Lord his God. Have you found yourself child of God? Look at David here. You know what happened to them? The Bible says Ziklag, where they were staying, was crushed, was crushed and burnt to the ground. Everything finished. What does that mean? In one day, David and his men, they lost everything. It wasn't a situation whereby they would say, oh, oh, let's go to this man's house. At least he has to share with us. At least we can all sleep under his roof. No, it was not the situation. The Bible says everything, both him and his men, everything was burnt down to the ground. Did it stop there? They carried their children, they carried their wives. David and his men, when they saw everything, hey, Mr. Flesh took over. The men could not take it again. They were so angry. They, was, they were so bitter. In the midst of what David was, the men around him that could have encouraged him, they were also bitter against him. As if he didn't lose. As if he, as if he too did not, was not part of the damage. David was part of it. But yet in that situation, the people around him, gathered to stone him yet this man of god found strength in the lord his god and child of god you are saying i've lost everything what has god done for me why not think about david everything we are sharing here happened in david's life this is just a little portion of it it happened in david's life child of god it happened in david's life in the midst of that situation where he lost everything, including his wife and his children, David found strength in God. And so, child of God, should we be offended in God? He lost everything, but yet he did not lose his confidence in God. He did not lose his confidence in God, child of God. That's why the Bible says that we should not cast our confidence away. Don't throw it away. Don't throw your trust for God away, no matter what you are going through. David understood Psalm 30 verse 5. He says, for his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes with the morning. David had an understanding of that scripture. David knew that the anger of God is short. But he said David knew something about the favor of God. It lasts for a lifetime. Did it not last a lifetime in David's life? It did. David knew that the morning will come. You want to see the secrets that kept pushing David forward? Let's look at it in Psalm 144. I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 2. Praise the Lord who is my rock. He trains my hand for war and gives my finger skill for battle. He is my loving ally and my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. He is my shield and I take refuge in him. He makes the nations submit to me. Look at David's life. Praise the Lord, my rock. This is the secret behind David's life. He knew the Lord was his unshakable rock. He said he trains my hands for war. All those things that happened in David's life, David understood that those were trainings. And beloved, if God is the one training you, can you lose a battle? God is your trainer. And by the way, if God is training you, what kind of situations do you think he will bring your way? 
Ah, he's a mighty God. He's a big God. There is nothing too hard for him. And so he can allow anything. Because he can handle it all. David says, he gives my finger skill for battle. Didn't you see the skills he displayed there even when they were cursing him? Look at the skill there. He said, don't touch him, leave him. Let him insult me. Perhaps God will see that I'm being wrong and he will bless me. Trainings he received from the living God. David saw them. He, he, he saw God training him. Child of God, God is training you. He said, he's my loving Ali. He knew the love of God. So even when Michael, instead of giving him love, gave him trouble, David was contented in the love of God. He says, he's my fortress, my tower of safety, my rescuer. These are the things that David knew about God. So that even when Goliath was boasting and coming, David knew that God is the one that rescues him. David knew that God is his tower of safety even when enemies came around David. David said he is my shield and I take refuge in him. So even when armies surrounded David, David knew he has a shield. A shield, not some shield. God alone, his shield. And he knew that God will never leave him. So no matter what came his way, he has already won because the shield, the keeper of Israel, that neither sleeps nor slumber, the one that created the heavens and the earth, the fourth man in the burning furnace, the alpha and the omega, the one that created the destroyer to destroy, the one that created Satan. That's why we say, Satan, God has no opposite. You know what that means? God really has no opposite because God created Satan. And so Satan cannot stand and face God on the other side. No. He's just a fallen angel. He's fallen from the height that God placed him before. So nothing can stand against God. God has no opposite. He's God alone. Nothing can stand before him. Everything bows. Everything falls before him. Every situation bow. Every situation fall before him. And David had this understanding. David took refuge in him. That's why at 17 years old, he could just keep talking. Why? Because he knew his God. Remember that the Bible says that the people that know their God, they will be strong and they will do exploits. David knew God. David knew God. He said, and I take refuge in him. He makes the nations submit to me. David knew that nations will submit because God will make them submit to, to David. And if you go to verse 15 of Psalm 114, he say, yes, joyful are those who live like this. Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. The secret of David. Always joyful because joyful are those who live like this. How do they live? Joyful indeed are those whose God is the Lord. And so child of God, why are you not joyful? Is the Lord not your God again? The Bible says that those whose God is the Lord, their joy is full. Joyful, joy is full. That's what it means. And so child of God, learn from the life of David. Don't be offended in God. Open your heart and believe God. Don't give up. Don't, be, don't give up. Open your heart. Believe God. This is what God is like. You want to know what God is like? Let's look at him from his word. The same Psalm 145. And I'm reading from verse 13. For your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. You rule throughout all generations. The Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their loads. His eyes, the eyes of all, look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. When you open your hands, you satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. 
He is filled with kindness. The Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, to all who call on him in truth. He grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears the cry for help and rescues them. The Lord protects all those who love him, but he destroys the wicked. I will praise the Lord and may everyone on earth bless his holy name forever and ever. Child of God, this is what God is like. This is what God is like. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Nobody can do coup against God. God is from everlasting to everlasting. He will never fade away. He is on the throne. He is the beginning. He is the end. He is the alpha. He is the omega. He is the A. He is the Z. It's in him we live. It's in him we move. It's in him we have our being. Heaven and earth belongs to him. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, child of God. He lives forever. There is no ending with him. It's not like uh, Trump's government that has ended. No. Child of God. The Bible says the Lord always keeps his promises. That's what who God is. Did he promise you, child of God? He may not come at your time, but he will come at the right time. He promised Abraham. So you are not the first person he's promising. Abraham waited. When Abraham tried plan B, we have not recovered from that mistake. And so, child of God, why not throw away plan B and wait on the Lord? The Bible says, the Lord always keeps his promises. He is gracious in all he does. The Lord helps the fallen and lifts those bent beneath their load. Maybe you have fallen. Even the one that is on the ground, God lifts him up. That's what he did in the valley of dry bones. Child of God. He lifts those bent beneath their loads. You are carrying the load. Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden. All you that are weary, and I will give you rest. He is the God that lifts the load that we are carrying. Why not give it to him, child of God? The Bible says, the eyes of all look to you in hope. You give them their food as they need it. Beloved, do you see who supplies our food? Do you see who supplies our need? Our duty is to look up to him. He says, when you open your hands, you satisfy the hunger and the thirst of every living thing. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. The God that feeds the birds in the air. What a mighty God. The God that feeds the ants. What a mighty God. The God that feels these squirrels that are roaming about America. What a mighty God. The God that takes care of the deer in the, in, in, in the bush. What a mighty God. Child of God, he is your provider. Don't be angry at God because there is no food in the house. Look up to him and put your trust in him. The Bible says the Lord is righteous in everything he does. The Lord is righteous in everything he does. The Lord is right in everything he does. That's why the Bible says in all things that we should give God thanks. Remember when I was in the midst of a difficult situation and I was trying, finding how to solve that mystery and God showed me a revelation where I was carrying my brain on a teaspoon and going to the hospital so that they would put it back in my head. Child of God, your brains cannot solve it. Put your trust in the Lord. Put your confidence in him. The Bible says the Lord is righteous in everything he does. He is filled with kindness. He is a kind God. He's not a wicked God. He's not like the devil. He said the Lord is close to all who call on him. Yes, all who call on him in truth. You see, there are people that God is, God is close to. Those that call on him. Not just calling on him. In truth. He, according to the word of God. And so, why me? Why me is not in the Bible. God, but why? is not there. Let us call upon him according to his word. God, are you still on the throne? It's not in the Bible. Help, help those that help themselves. It's not in the Bible. Let's call on him according to his word, child of God. The Bible says he grants the desires of those who fear him. You see? Some of us, we just claim 
God will give me my heart desire. Do you fear God? The Bible says he grants the desires of those who fear him. He hears their cry for help and rescues them. David feared the Lord. The Bible says God, the Lord protects all who love him. But he destroys the wicked. He doesn't hide anything from us. He destroys the wicked. And so child of God, are you wicked? As long as we are not wicked, destruction is not for us, child of God. But if we are wicked, the Bible says there is no peace for the wicked. And so he has made everything plain to us. If we apply the truth, we will always have victory. David, David applied this truth. Despite the fact that he went, he saw all manner of challenges, all manner from people, from loved ones, from enemies, from fathers everywhere. David was bombarded. But you see, look at 2 Samuel chapter 8. And I'm reading from verse 1 to verse 6. After this, David defeated and subdued the Philistines by conquering Gath, their largest town. David also conquered the land of Moab. He made the people lie down on the ground in a row, and he measured them off in groups with a length of rope. He measured off two groups to be executed for every one group to be spared. The Moabites who were spared became David's subjects and paid him tribute money. David also destroyed the forces of Hadezer son of Rehob, king of Zobah, when Hadadezer marched out to strengthen his control over the Euphrates River, David captured 1,000 chariots, 7,000 chariots, and 20,000 foot soldiers. He crippled all the chariots' horses, except enough for 100 chariots. When Arameans from Damascus arrived to help King Hadadezer, David killed 22,000 of them. Then he placed Several army garrisons, garrisons in Damascus, the Aramean capital, and the Aramean became David's subject and paid him tribute money. So the Lord made David victorious everywhere he went. You read it again, verse 13. So David became even more famous when he returned from destroying 18,000 Edomites in the Valley of Salt. He placed army garrisons throughout Edom, and all the Edomites became David's subject. In fact, the Lord made David victorious wherever he went. Child of God, what is the Lord saying? What's the secret? This man went through different difficult situations, but the Lord kept giving him victory. The Lord kept giving him victory. That is your destiny. That is your destiny. Look at David's life. Champion. God kept giving him victory. And so beloved, the kind of heart that David had, that no matter what came his way, he was always on God's side. May God give us that kind of heart. Because it does not matter what comes our way. The lion of the tribe of Judah, the heir of David's throne, he has prevailed already. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Give